one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time and Demetrius Johnson went up against one of the most dangerous, prolific, pure Muay Thai fighters in Rotting. They fought each other in a mixed ruled fight. In the first and third round, it's a Muay Thai fight. No takedowns, no submissions, none of that stuff. The only difference is they have MMA gloves and they're in a cage. The second and fourth round are MMA, where everything goes, and the fight played out in a way I did not expect. They gave that first round to Rod Tang because number one, it gave the Muay Thai fighter an advantage, and everybody knows, once it goes MMA, the fight's over. And that's essentially what kind of happened in that second round. But the first round was more surprising than any of us thought it would be. Everybody thought that Rod Tang would absolutely take over that first round, and Demetrius Johnson would barely have anything for him. That was not the case at all. Demetrius Johnson actually did so well in that first round, I really hope it opens a lot of fans' eyes, a lot of fighters' eyes and experts, of how good MMA fighters are pretty much at every discipline, especially when you come to the level of Demetrius Johnson. We saw what Anderson Silva was able to do. We saw even what Conor McGregor was able to do when they went into a different sport. And now with Demetrius Johnson just striking with Rod Tang and doing so well, I think it's going to start redefining on how good MMA fighters actually are at other disciplines. Demetrius Johnson actually had a lot of good moments against Rod Tang in that first round, specifically landing his overhands. Rod Tang, as we all know, presses forward, looking for the big knockout blow, throwing a lot of left hooks to the head and to the body, trying to get Demetrius Johnson out of there. The reason why he was going for the knockout so quickly is because it's pressured on him. He doesn't want to go to the second round. He needs to finish Mighty Mouse in the first. He knows how much of a disadvantage he's going to be in going into the second. So a first round knockout for a flyweight is a lot to ask for, especially against a guy like Demetrius Johnson who could do everything at a high level. His boxing's phenomenal. His Muay Thai's phenomenal. He's great in the clinch. Really good defense in a lot of areas in the striking realm. And you saw that in a fight with Rotang. A lot of people thought that Rotang would run through him in the striking, maybe not finish him, but definitely showed to be far superior. But that wasn't necessarily the case. Money Mouse uses clinch to his advantage over and over again, neutralizing the striking, while Rod Tang was coming out there with all the power he had really quickly. I mean, he came out in the fight throwing a left hook right cross combination right from the beginning and caught Mighty Mouse off guard, and Mighty Mouse went for a takedown it looked like, and then he switched it up, went into the clinch instead, showing his wrestling instincts that it wasn't the first time. Every time he got caught clean, it looked like Mighty Mouse wanted to go for a takedown. Happened later in the round as well when he got caught by a vicious right hand over his guard. And Mighty Mouse was landing a lot of good knees in the clinch, and you saw the wrestling experience that he has, as well as the MMA experience, to be able to throw in those underhooks and land some of his strikes. And Mighty Mouse has definitely had the most success in close range. Not even looking at the clinch, just as overhands and hooks were landing pretty good on Rod Tang whenever they got close to each other. And because Rod Tang was coming out there with so much power, he was really extending into Mighty Mouse, getting into those close range exchanges. And the most fascinating thing you could see here is, notice Rod Tang stands and then look how he switches into the second round. He's a front foot plotter, putting a lot of power forward, pressuring Mighty Mouse to the fence. And Mighty Mouse didn't care. He wanted to move away. The guy's looking for the big knockout in his own world. Second round comes along. And Rod Tang is fighting so differently, it didn't even look right. Wider stance, sideways, he almost looked like a karate fighter out there. And it's a big question a lot of hardcore fans had throughout the years. Why do fighters go into MMA and they fight in this karate stance? It's all based on distance, hand speed, blitzing in, and all this kind of stuff. A lot of sidekicks got introduced. Now even Rod Tang did the same thing. Other high-level strikers have done it, and now even Rod Tang did it. It's more effective, and all the strikers know it. In MMA, potentially in a fight with no rules, whatever. Whatever it is, this kind of striking style tends to be the most efficient or effective. And all these guys think the same thing, using a lot of elusive movement and striding away from Mighty Mouse for the whole round. Now, I can expect this from Rod Tang in this kind of fight, given the fact that those takedowns are threatening, man. He doesn't want to get anywhere near those. But even the attacks he was throwing, like sidekicks to the knee and stuff, you also have to know that he switched into Southpaw for most of that round. He was orthodox in the first, when Southpaw in the second, most likely looking to counter Demetrius Johnson with his power punches, power kicks, and also use that sidekick to the knee off his lead foot. He turned almost into Wonderboy Thompson in that second round, thinking of fighting that exact same way. Very different fighter from the first to the second, and notice Mighty Mouse. He never changed. Same stance in the first as he had in the second. MMA fighters do not necessarily have to change the way they fight. You can even look back when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather. Some different attacks, yeah, here and there. But his stance was very similar. The way he would punch was very similar besides the back of the headshots. Even when you see Anderson Silva go up against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Same stance, same style. Because MMA fighters know everything. They know all the disciplines. Whereas a pure striker like Rod Tang has to switch it up if he goes up against a wrestler. Or an MMA fighter. Or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter. Pure strikers like Rod Tang for an example have to fight differently when they go into an MMA fight. 
They have to. And this brings up other examples like people thinking Floyd Mayweather do great in MMA, Mike Tyson would have, you know, Manny Pacquiao, that was a big thing. None of these guys would fight the same way in MMA. Their styles would be completely different. Floyd can't use that Philly shell and pull back on everything the way he does. Mike Tyson cannot bob and weave his way in the way he did in boxing. He can't do that. All these guys would fight differently. If Rotting would have fought in that second round the way he did in the first, that fight would have been over quick. He would get taken down, man, every single time. Every time he would throw a punch or a kick, or just in general, Demetri Johnson could just blast double leg him and Rotting would have nothing for it. Moving away like this, keeping a sideways stance and being longer is at least going to give him some kind of a natural defense against the takedown. He's an elusive target, he's moving away laterally, and he became much more of a counter puncher this time, anticipating what Demetri Johnson is going to do moving forward. But ultimately, it didn't matter at the end of the day because Demetri Johnson knew from the first round that Rotting was always throwing that left hook. So even if he would trigger it moving forward in the MMA fight, Rod Zing would throw it. It's instinct. He's been training it for so long. It's a habit that he has, and Johnson went right under it for the single leg takedown, drove him to the mat, and Rod Zing gave up his back, as most people who don't really have experience in grappling are going to do. The thing that was a little bit surprising about Rod Zing was he was actually fighting off the hands in the beginning. He knew to tuck in one of the hands and didn't want Demetrius Johnson to get it free. The impressive thing about this was most people that don't know grappling, they would instead try to fight the hand that's around the face. They wouldn't even focus on the other hand, but he was intelligent enough to know that, okay, that hand is around my face, but he cannot get a choke if I have this one tucked in. As long as I keep this hand right here, I cannot get choked out. That's some fight IQ by Rotang. Now, when the choke was settling, he actually stopped fighting it off. It looked like he didn't know what to do until the choke was actually in. So something happened in his training for this fight where it showed to me that he knew how to separate the hands from getting choked out and he knew how to defend it while the choke was in. But in between that, his mind kind of went blank. He didn't train in between right there, but he was pushing up on the elbow when the choke was coming in and then tried to peel off the top hand, but ultimately got choked unconscious. The guy didn't even tap out. That showed to me, man, if Rodson wanted to be an MMA fighter, he could be very successful. He has a lot of things he was doing right and something he's never done before. For an example, when you saw James Tony come into MMA, the guy knew nothing of what to do. He didn't know how to defend a takedown at all. He couldn't even react to a takedown properly. Really had no idea what to do on the ground. And when it even came to the striking, the guy fought like a straight up boxer and got taken down very easily. But that's not the knock on James Tony. Most strikers would do the same thing. They wouldn't know how to react to any of this stuff. Rod Tang has a different level of fight IQ. If this guy wants to become an MMA fighter, I actually think he would be somewhat successful. He's only 24 years old, so he has a lot of time if he wants to transition but ultimately man it was a amazing win for Demetrius Johnson who exceeded expectations in the fight he did way better in the first round than anybody thought he would and just further shows that he's one of the best fighters of all time the MMA portion of this fight was definitely going to be easy for him and everybody knew that he was going to blow right through Rotang but the fact that he struck with Rotang so well in the first that gives him even more credit to his greatness